is the market narrative now one that's negative enough for people to feel comfortable buying at these lower levels? I think it's moving in that direction. All it needs is a catalyst. I mean, we're moving towards deeper and deeper oversold. There'll be a catalyst to get the market climbing higher. Uh, it could be an announcement from a company that comes in with a positive pre-announcement uh, that, that will tilt the, the market over. But the deeper the sentiment, the worse the sentiment, you're moving towards a, uh, a rally. But again, is it the end of the downturn? Probably not. Is it the end of the downturn? Probably not. Jeff, that, that doesn't sound very good, but there have got to be places. I mean, even retail traders and investors I talk to are saying, yeah, we're negative, but man, look at how far, say, Netflix has fallen or Meta Platforms has fallen or even Microsoft and Alphabet. By the way, both of those names, Microsoft and Alphabet, hit 52-week lows on Friday. I think you bring up a great point, Dom, and certainly it's very challenging to dance between the raindrops as we see sentiment really sorrow. We saw the market close the quarter on quite the whimper. September down 9%. The worst quarter we've had since then was 2002 when the September month was down 11%. So certainly it is a challenging macro environment. But I think Quincy brings up a great point. We are seeing oversold conditions. We are seeing potentially maximum pessimism. So I do think the catalyst could be Earnings season. Look at earnings season. You continue to see that bar be lowered. So I think there's a ton of opportunity in technology. You know, Dom, I beat the drum all year long on moving from growth to value. I think there's an opportunity to your point to look at some of these mega cap names like the Facebooks, like the Metas, uh, also Microsoft. You're seeing names that are offering value and growth. But what's interesting, Dom, and I'm going to put a bow on this box, is that you're not seeing panic out there. You're seeing volatility. Certainly the VIX options. We saw a huge volume surge last week to close out the month, but we're not seeing any panic on there. So this is a price discovery. I think it's somewhat orderly. And I do think we see the markets move higher. I am cautiously optimistic, Dom. I, I, I've heard a lot of those conversations, Quisby, about, uh, Quincy, about what Jeff just brought up, this idea that there has been no panic, that this has been a revaluation, gradually speaking, over the last several months of an equities market in the face of rising interest rates. But the fact that there's no panic can also be something to panic about, Why, right, Quincy? This idea that we haven't seen a flush out or capitulation is one coming. Well, most likely one is coming. I mean, there'll be another event, you know, some global event, a fault line that, that we'll see, and that may scare the, the daylights out of the, the weaker hands. You know what's interesting about the, the rallies we've had? They've been led by retail buyers. Think about what institutional buyers, the tsunami that will come in when they feel comfortable that we have discounted all of the headwinds, maybe even including a recession and what kind of recession. But going into this month, I do think that the earnings season, there's so much pessimism. We've seen more negative um, estimates coming in before we even open the official opening of earnings. All you need are a couple of companies, big companies coming in and saying, you know what? It's not that bad. Remember the second quarter? We went in with tremendous pessimism, and we actually came out with the second quarter. It was not stellar, but it was okay. I think you're going to see that. I think there's going to be a catalyst to get this market roaring, a very strong uh, rally. No, no, but no, I don't think it's the end. Quincy, I don't think it's the end. Quincy, okay, okay, yeah. okay, if I could just follow up with you on this. Uh, Jeff had brought up you know, some of this, the, the picks that he was looking at. Yeah. He's trying to find some value in beating up parts yeah. of the market. Are, are there places in particular that, that you think could be attractive or that, that go on your shopping list, so to speak, if, if this negativity continues? Well, yes, absolutely. Um, the fact is, we still like energy stocks. You know, you've got the OPEC meeting this week. I think they're going to they're going to cut more, not what they did last month for this month. I think it's going to be bigger. I don't know if it's going to be, you know, a million barrels a day of a cut, but it's going to be pricey. They want to protect. They want to protect while they can a, a bottom for the um, for the cartel. But I do think also. You know, people are looking at the bond market. The bond market has suddenly been resurrected. And the short end, short duration investment grade, I think, is very attractive. But again, going back into the equity market, yes, you do have, you do have better and better opportunities. But I think you're going to have better entry points still. But just you've got to be invested in the equity market. I would look at some of those beaten up names in the energy sector. Supply is tight. The uh, Strategic Petroleum Reserve has to start being filled again, and we're going into the winter season. All right, Jeff Kilberg, we'll give you the last word. Just a few moments left here. What's your biggest fear in the market right now? 
You know, my biggest fear is that the boat is listing to one side, Dom, and that actually make, gets me excited. So look at themes that worked all year. Tactically, you know, the portfolio I run, we've owned energy. That theme, look at IEO, IGE. Those are two ETFs. ExxonMobil, ConocoPhillips, these are all names that continue to produce. So look at energy, dance between the raindrops, and don't get so embarrassed. It's going to be okay, folks. Just breathe.